So for a while now, I've been staring at this blank wall opposite my closet, trying to figure out what film posters I should put up there because there's so many to choose from and so many directions I could go in. For example, do I go with a director I really love, like a poster based on this uh, Clockwork Orange image from the Stanley Kubrick film? Or maybe I go with a different director I really like, like a variation on this uh, Vertigo poster from uh, the Hitchcock film. Another way to go would be with a genre, like I love any of these old horror film posters. I also like the great uh, science fiction film posters from the 50s and the 60s. Another genre I could choose would be uh, maybe some of these film noir posters. They're always great too. So what do all those posters have in common? Well, yes, they're from older films, but also those posters are more interesting to look at. Just the boldness of the design and the, and the bold colors they use. And if you think about it, starting around the mid nineties or so, film posters started to get pretty boring looking and also very similar looking with a few exceptions. But a lot of film artists and film buffs started to take notice of this and they said, you know what, we're gonna make our own film posters the way we wanna make them. This is the Kazdoy closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff I love. And today I wanna share with you some alternative film posters from the art underground. So all the posters that I wanna share with you come from this book called Alternative Movie Posters, Film Art from the Underground. And it's by Matthew Chonaki. This is volume one. And even, uh, I'm gonna show you a few things here and even the one of the first ones I, I really like a lot. This is for The Shining. And um, look at the unusual black and white design they have. And then it's a little tongue in cheek because in the top it says, uh, come relax at the Overlook Hotel. Uh, swell caretakers, absolute isolation, fantastically cruel winters, never a dull moment. And then down here, come play forever and ever and ever and ever. So I'm gonna show you a few uh, that I chose. And you'll see that For each one, there is a, uh, the name of the uh, company or the artist, and then where they're located and how you can contact them. And then a little information down here about the poster and what the artist's influences were and their favorite uh, film genres, etc. So I like these two. Uh, they're very simple. And this one's from Psycho. And I just like the, uh, the design of all the droplets coming down from the shower, the famous shower scene, of course. And um, this bottom one here is a little red skull. And all these uh, posters were uh, usually commissioned for these film festivals. As you can see, they're appearing in different uh, theaters. And some were commissioned for art galleries. And they would go for about 30 bucks. And then they'd range up in price to you know, thousands of dollars. Um, this book, by the way, is about 208 pages. You can find it. It's hardcover. You can find it for about... 29 bucks or so. So I like this one, Psycho, and the same uh, artist group did one for Monty Python, the Holy Grail, with the um, bunny, the killer rabbit, and then, then the skull design there again. So next one I want to show you is um, these two, and this is an example of if you don't know the film, you probably won't understand the reference. This is for Zombieland, and it's a package of Twinkies. And if you know the film, you'll know that one of the main characters, played by Woody Harrelson, is always looking for Twinkies. And there's the blood because of the zombies. This is Blue Velvet, one of my favorite films. And uh, one of the characters only wants Pabst Blue Ribbon. So there's a Heineken's crossed out, doesn't like Heineken, only wants that beer. So it's sort of like either you know the film and you get the joke, or you don't. Next up, are, I like these two also. This is from uh, the Peckinpah film, Straw Dogs, and it's sort of an image of Dustin Hoffman 
from the end of the film where he's looking down on all the stuff that's happened. If you know the film, it's very violent and rather disturbing. And then here's one from uh, Die Hard, and he just shows this image of uh, when the Bruce Willis character is stepping on all the broken glass. So much more interesting in these designs so far than, than really what we're getting nowadays for these films. Next up we have Another favorite of mine, Full Metal Jacket. He used the same sort of typography here and then the green military background. But once again, if you know the film, you'll get this because uh, near the end, they're singing the Mickey Mouse Club song. So he turned the helmet into Mickey Mouse ears. And also here with Escape from New York, the apple, New York, big apple. And there it is in the background. And then you have a snake coming through the apple because the main character's name is Snake. So, other example of in-jokes for the film. Now, this uh, artist, he, as you can see, had a similar approach. He was looking at uh, cereals that often have uh, movie tie-ins with the cereals, like products. And so he said, why not just make the cereal the film? So you can see he did one for the Goonies and one for Gremlins where they're designed like um, cereal boxes and then he has little references to the films on the cereal, cereal boxes. I like these also. They took the sort of the design of exploitation films from the 70s and put it onto a newer film. So here's one for Silent Night, Deadly Night, and a few jokey things they say in here, like, um, you know, sex, murder, gifts. And uh, here's another one, similar approach, exploitation movie ap approach for The Cabin in the Woods, and a few jokey lines in here also. And again, I like the bold design of these. And uh, this guy, or it's really a group called Old Red Jalopy, and they took an interesting approach to these Star Wars films. They used a uh, 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 design from boxing matches to advertise the Star Wars films. So that's another interesting take on these films. And then Friday 13th, the whole series down here, I guess it was a marathon or something. So you see the Jason mask with all the different tools inside here. And then I like this one too, for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have the hook. And if you've seen the film, you know why that hook is important. And then there's a map of Texas and it's sort of ragged and, and bleeding on the bottom. So there you have it. And this is what I like about artists. They see things that we see, but in their own unique way. And I like how they looked at these films and they pulled things out of them and put their own unique spin on it. There's the book again, Alternative Movie Posters. So I hope you like this video. Um, maybe you have some comments you'd like to leave for it or some suggestions on what I should do with this blank wall that I'm staring at. Uh, if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Um, subscribe would be great. Otherwise, I hope you like this video and I will see you next time.